Okay, welcome back to Champagne Football. This is a review of round 14, 13. 13. Round 13. So, unfortunately, it's just uh, Chaz and I today because we probably would. How, how come we've not got a guest? Everybody's busy, mate. Have we didn't left it too late? Probably. I left it a bit too late this week, uh, but we do have, what, the next week? The next week, week and the week after lined up. And potentially the week after? Aye, and potentially the week after. Okay, who's next week, bro? Cam, Hakua. And then Romero's after that? Romero's after that. Okay, so we've got Cam from Hakua next week, Cam Filler, and then we've got... Phil Paul. So I said, I said Phil. Phil. <laughs> Check, brother. <laughs> uh, Cam Phil Paul yep. next week, and then Jason Romero. The week after, the on week the 23rd, aye. Okay, lovely. Well, we've got and a few others trickled in behind that. But me and Chai, so... If you want to turn off, it's probably every time we're doing it. That was him. <laughs> 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 uh, we're still going to re review round 13, uh, having a bit of banter in between, and... Get stuck in. So, looking at last weekend's games, MPL 1. Big scores. Both the academy team, well, two of the three academy teams, big losses. And uh, Sydney FC, Central Coast Mariners. Well, I mean, Apia pumped Sydney FC, yeah. I mean, that's them two weeks in a row. Beat Western Sydney Wonders 6 0. Beat Sydney FC 7 1. Uh, look, I don't. It's, it's, it's quite harsh, I suppose. Obviously, the Western Sydney Wanderers result was a bit of a freak. Is it recording? It's, it's recording. <laughs> it was a bit of a freak, considering they've had a, a good year so far. But to beat Sydney FC the next week 7 1 is not so great for the academies. Well, I mean, Sydney FC have been funny, not because I'm pretty sure they played a few times, they played quite young lads. I, 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 don't, I don't know the lineups, I don't know. Ah, I am the same. Regardless, you still need to beat this put in front of you. Seven goals away from home. Six, six and a half at half time, man. Ah, it was, uh, I, turned, I was just checking the score about 30 minutes in, I think it was 4 0, 5 0, and I thought, oh no, this is going to get. I know, and it was early 5 0, uh, so. No, that's what I thought, man. Fair play, I mean, that's a goal difference, and it showed 42 goals, one behind Wanderers, considering Wanderers were on quite a like, Aye, a big run. Appy have already caught up with them, and that's Appy now two points off the top. Oh, wow. So tight. Wanderers still top to be fair, so maybe they've had a lot of blip. Maybe it won't. Uh, Who do they play this week? Olympic at home? Olympic at home, aye. I mean, but they've lost a, what's that, three games in the bounce? Two. Two games in the bounce? I think so. Lost to Sydney United? Lost, lost to Arpia. Is that only two? That's the two. Well, we'll see how they go moving forward, but Arpia back in the mix. Ah, yeah, so the big, best part, best part, in the highlights, Jack Stewart's pass for Rory Jordan's goal aye, was a bit of a joke, aye. So his great awareness as he's run away for goal to reverse the ball into the space. Good finish as well. I don't really know how he finished it. He ended up on his backside. No, I don't know. But I think it was, um, it was Dom... No, never mind. Different game. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking of Sutherland. Finished the ending in the Sutherland game. No, they had Nathan Denham goals, didn't they? Aye, they did. Aye. Um, he signed. Did Jengi sign because the, the other keeper got sent off? Sure, that's very coincidental timing if it's not that. Aye, but then it's, it's a shame for whoever's the second choice goalkeeper. Probably about the 20s, lad. I know, but still, you just, just keep it oh, getting sent off. He would have to sign if he's going to play, so maybe they're just going to register him, play that game until Beckett's back. That's what I mean, surely it's an opportunity to use. There must be something, but they could probably only sign him outside the window if it's an emergency, so I'm assuming the, the 20s keeper may get injured. Oh, maybe get injured, aye. What happened to you with Sydney United? Aye, I suppose, there? aye, it was the, the second choice. Aye, so I, was, I mean, again, guessing, but why else would you bring in? Nathan, aye. Aye, it's just interesting, as you say, the timing of it. Um, but aye, sidetracked. Going to the Wolves, Central Coast Mariners, 5-1 Wolves. Can I zoom me? Great goal. Delta. Great goal. And then Dylan Ryan also scored an overhead kick. Well, can I zoom me? Probably, I think it's got a bicycle kick in the top end. It's going to be a goal of the week, isn't it? It needs to be. Uh, tell me was a cracker. It was. Kind of it's good too, didn't it? It's got a header as well. Uh, it's got a good header. Um, Will scored four goals from corners, but... Uh, so, so, I mean, defending wasn't great for Central Coast. Agreed. But dangerous set pieces, aye. But I think you'd expect Wolves to beat Central Coast. Central Coast have been where they are just now. Bottom. Bottom. Two wins. 37 goals conceded. Wow. Is uh, that most in the league, by the way? I think it might be. No, no, Sydney FC. Sydney FC. Thirty-eight. So, mm. I asked quite a lot of goals to be fair. I thirty-seven goals. I expect. Man, it wasn't. It wasn't played. Average three goals a game. It was played at South Coast Flames pitch, I think. Ian McKellar, I think it's called. That's a we played against. 
Cup again? Ah, uh, Sugar Cup. Is that not? Ah, uh, Sugar Cup. Is that not the South Coast Lane pitch? I think so, aye. Uh, but that's, is that I just... Is not a great pitch? Is it not? Surface-wise? But I think, obviously, with the rain. No, no, it's just... It's just it's, it's, um, but a good result for, for Wolves. I think that maybe it's a kick up the backside for them. They've not been as good as they kind of were. <coughs> it's nothing though. Aye, the wee fall off. Yeah. So you're hoping this was a blip? Aye, it was a blip. Sydney United. Big one. Aye, massive. And tell me, first goal was a belter, the free kick. Um, they must be, what, third or fourth now? Sydney United are... Uh, no, actually fifth. Oh, wow. But there's only... Well, we go back as far as Sith to Blacktown, there's five points between first and fifth. First and sixth, sorry. Oh, wow. Five points, so it's tight. They're talking. Well, if Wanderers don't win this weekend and Blacktown do, Blacktown could be three points off the top, or four points off the top. Ah, but then if Appiah win, Appiah go top? No, that's what I mean, because Rockdale are second. If Rockdale win, they go in 32. Blacktown win and Wanderers lose, they go four points behind Rockdale. Oh, wow. So go even tighter. Wow. So it's uh, very, very tight. And it's getting to the halfway point. We're only have to stop using that excuse. Ah, it's, it's early. It's not early anymore. Get to the decent, and they've got the transfer window to look forward to as well. When is the transfer window? I think it's, uh, I don't know exactly, but it's, I think it's like 21st of June or something. Just in time for like, the last five games, six games? I think, I think it's around 21. So there's nine games after. It's a stupid time to have the window, man. No, but there's a reason for it. What's the reason? Do you know what? I'm going to try and pull up because I was actually talking to the guy who told me the exact reason for it. I just need to try and... Here we go. I'm going to read it out because I can't actually remember. <laughs> That's not what it means. <laughs> Every country gets two registration periods for professional competitions and the larger one has to precede the highest level of competition, i.e. the A-League. But because one is played in summer and our level is in the winter, it's impossible to place a registration period at the midway point of our season, which is May as that would mean the registration period would close on August 2nd, two months before the A-League season. So if anyone's listening and understood that, it's superb. <laughs> I actually don't understand that. So what's August 2nd got to do with then? What's that, sorry? August 2nd is when the midway point, so I'm going to read it out again, right? <laughs> I'm going to read it one more time. Every country gets two registration periods for professional competitions, right? Mm -hmm. And the larger one has to proceed the highest level of competition, which is the A-League. Well, the largest window needs to precede that. Right, okay. But because one is played in the summer, yeah. and our level, so MPL's in the winter, it's impossible to place the registration period, which is a transfer window, at the midway point. So you can't place the MPL transfer window in May. Because, because the, the, the A-League's not finished? It says two months before the A-League season. Damn. Sound. Clear as mud. Sound. <laughs> right, okay. Aye, happy with that? Aye, buzzing. Delighted. Well, that's the answer from someone who's involved. They're probably listening to this because I know they're listening to the show. Aye, aye. Thinking, User idiots. These are a couple of clowns, but aye. Nice right, sound. Welcome to the circus. Right, so, Sydney United, what great one. Brilliant was, uh, um, uh, by the way, what about until when they scored and they ran to the corner? And it looks for ages there was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> then you just saw at the very end there was people up the top. I was laughing, I know. Oh, I was saying to myself, who's he celebrating to? <laughs> and then as the, pan, the camera just kind of pans up, you start to see people at the top. That's so funny, seeing the seven guys. <laughs> that was funny, man. Um, Adrian as well, so red card. I think that. I thought that, but the, the referee has signalled like a stamp. So I don't know if they're, when they're rolling about the linesman thinks he's did a bit of a kick out because uh, that's what the referee's signal was for the red card. Because uh, okay. that was my uh, issue as they come uh, across with an elbow, but the referee's signalled kicking. I watched that a few times, but I didn't even have a clue. Aye, ah, so that's what it's for. Animal, so he is. Um, good goal or second goal? Who said the second goal? Nah. Oh, I screamed on. Nah. Last minute, wasn't it? It was last minute. It was nothing else going to happen, finish. but it was a good finish. Um, St so George beat Manly 3-1. Bit of a nothing game. The manly keeper was busy. I think three one was maybe a kind score well, for they man. They were not one now, aye. But uh, St George well looked from the highlights anyway. By okay. far, a better team. That looked comfortable. And then house and our red card. Yes, that's two already. Um, Who's all? Oh, Adrian, aye, gets sent off. Um, it looked like it was going to be quite a hard game for Marconi. I think. 
in terms of before the red card. And then... How was your chances? It was... I'd say they had not chances, chances. But they were, I, they were, they looked like there was a few opportunities to score goals, and at the same time, Marconi didn't really have anything really clear cut. Did not get a red card, but it was not quite early. Right, it's 38 minutes, aye. So then, from then, Marconi obviously went on and I phone that was comfortable. That was, um, who scored the goals? Dom scored the goal, Dom scored, Timakovsky scored, the SH and Aliyama. Yeah, and then, do you know, you say that, right? See, watching the, the highlights, I saw that as well, but watching the highlights, Dom didn't score on the highlights. I found quite a lot. This app gets his scores so, on a few times. Temelkovsky scored the first one. Yeah. And then Yesic scored two headers. Oh, okay. And then Ayama scored. Well, I think I do think this app gets it wrong sometimes. Who scores a goal? Because I got it was wrong last week, I think it was. They scored all two scores. Ayama's a good goal, so it was, man. Ah, you say that. He's right? got the ball played across and he's pretended to shoot. And in, in, in this defence, pretending to shoot, it just opened up like a path as wide as this, as this table for him to go through and go. And then compose finish, keepers come out and start now. Very good play. Okay, cool, crack on to oh, Black Ted versus Spirit. I don't want to spend too long on this because I went on my grant again. Did you say Black Town were pure shite? <laughs> <laughs> Black Town have got a very, very strong forward line, that's to, to say the very least. Got some right good players brought off. They brought on, sorry, Fernandez and Mario off the bench. Wow. Strong. Choi obviously played. Jack yeah. O'Brien played. Um, Travis. Travis Major against got. Was, uh, that's pretty much. I think at one point there was five, maybe six, like proper attacking players. I don't know, sure. up. But, but it was a, it was a turn in the game, man. Jagger Bryan scores a really good goal. They score right on half time, make it 2 1. Then they scored, I think it was 44th and 48th, the two goals or something like that. Kills you a bit. Kills you a bit, aye. And then that was aye. I can't say we deserve to win, obviously. There was a, a turn in it, but. Because we've got Blacktown, we've got some right firepower going forward. Fair. Uh, and then they've only got five points off the top, so they'll do well. Um, big one for St George and the new pitch, Mark. Uh, looks nice. Have you been to it? No, nah, I was at it before. Yeah, okay. um, You've been to the pitch already? No, no, no. So, the, it's not since it's been done up, I was, at, I was there. With, with how it used to be, yeah, okay. but it looks nice. From the um, one of the players showed us some pictures, it looks really nice. Um, and it was a good result to kind of open. Barton Park against Olympic. Um, Equaliser for St George, did you see the penalty it was given? I mean, I've seen the penalty you can give him, but I don't know, it's, not, it's too far away, you know. But it's just looked like the boy was running through and he's bounced off somebody and went down. Penalties are right cards, mate, MPL refs, no fans. I mean, they're, I'm sure they're nice guys. I'm sure they're lovely guys, but some of the, some of the big decisions on penalties are reds. So right. are very, very quick to give them, in my opinion, anyway. Right, because you're right. The, the referee looked certain, and watching it, obviously, as you say, it's quite far away. But it's hard to judge. Though. Again, it's hard guys, to judge. Like even last time, I'm like, what the hell what happened? happened? Right. You can't. See, if the lines right in front of it, I'm not saying it was the right decision. Aye, you're hoping really that. Aye. Opinion over mine because I can't. I'm looking at it. It's one, one view of it. Um, aye, soft pain. I thought anyway, but they put it away. Vac has scored a good goal for Olympic, to be yeah, fair. Um, and. Watching again highlights, I've made a lot of chances, man. Like yeah, an awful lot of chances, but they never really troubled the keeper. It was more Aye, missing the target than watching. anything else. Um, but good result for St George. Um, they play, I think, Central Coast Mariners this weekend. And then if they beat Central Coast, they go 12 points above them. George Saints, they're on 16. It's. Uh, 12 points becomes a big, big gap. Yeah, 12 points is a big gap, eh? Yeah. I, I, I just, in that bottom half, like, it does get, it can change very quick because if you get a run. And a run being three games even, uh, like, it makes a massive it, difference. Obviously, if you're in that bottom half, you're not picking up any consistency. Yeah. Naturally, so it's very easy to be in a slump. Well, you could easily find yourself in an off four or five games without picking up wins. And if someone happens to find a bit of form, yeah. You can find yourself the gap getting closed very, very ah, quickly. Ah, very quick. Or you're pulling away from somebody very, very quickly. But you see, so an office is like, not, half, not far off the halfway point. Oh, but I think two, two games in then? I think, think from about 20 games onwards. So then you start to... You start to know from 20 games onwards who's fighting for what. Yeah. And then cracking on. Fair, fair. Last okay. game, Rockdale. 3-0 um, win over Sutherland. Um, Nathan Denham back in goal, which you already spoke about. Um, but comfortable win for Rockdale, it looked so like. Good finish, uh, uh, 
Cordia. Cordia was second goal was a good I think striker. Cordia, I said he's not scored in a while. He's I, scored two, I think. A couple of years, I think it was though. A couple of years. Aye. Aye. Aye, two, two goals in the fair play. And the Euro scored. Euro scored. Nah. Well, I scored the other. He scored in the scored a free kick against Cordia. Oh, in the Australia Cup. I think that's what it was. Right. Okay. He posted a goal, but I wasn't. I think that was the Australia Cup. Um, with I, MPL 1 done, MPL 2. The P lost to Baxter. Berries, I 1 0 again. But I'm just reading the report, it just says that the scoreline, it seemed like the scoreline was a lot closer than it should have been. Berries missed a penalty and a lot of chances. The Berries are, that's like, they're on the table, aren't they? Aye. They're on the table and the peanut, the peanut struggling, man. They're really struggling, man. Five points. Man, it, it keeps, every time we talk about our points, we're the only team they beat, man. Oh, the only one, mm -hmm. And then uh, Tigers won finally back to winning ways. I beat Dunbar 3-0. Um, not each half-time. See, see, considering they had a bit of a sloppy form, Tigers, they're only six points off Bulls. Aye. Oh, so, we, we, we beat Bulls at the weekend as well. Aye. That's a good result, right? Um, I wasn't there. Sorry, shock. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Chaz. Chaz Cheers, and mate. his goalkeeping mad squad. <laughs> mad squad. Won the women's... Grand final against Melbourne City? Melbourne City, I beat them 1-0. Um, Jada was brilliant, made a massive save in the first half, first five minutes. Um, and nice, she was really good. So Should it was... Where's your medal? It was too heavy. It? it was too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I done my neck in the plane. Um, bye, good to, good to kind of put, not good to put an end to it, but it'll be nice to get some consistency in terms of me playing. Because I've not really had... Are you straight back in? Don't know, mate. Well, we won 4-3. So it's it's the team one. Who's so your, who's your first who's your first choice goalkeeper then? Chad Samishonga. Nah, um, Nick Croucher please. Good keeper. Nick who? Croucher. You said he was shit. Fucking horrific. <laughs> no, never. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, never. Sorry, Nick. Um, no, nah, you can do well, mate. Um, four three at the weekend. What I watched the games back and they couldn't have done anything about the goals. One was a penalty. One has made a save on at the post and it's came back out and they put it in. Um, so I, he's done he's done well, um, but for me it's like I just want to get a run now. Like I want to get back in and stay in. So I think that. Well, it's just to get back, mate. That's it. I need to fight. Uh, we'll look at uh, Let's start. Let's go back. Beat Rams two one. First loss in five games. Is that I think back Spartans in that one. Ah, you did. I did. Brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then it was our game. We beat Bulls four three. Kevin Lopez came off the bench. To score the winner again. I think he scored five or six. No, it wasn't top score. I was top score. Top score in MPL3. Aye, scored five or six. Um, Drew came back. No, I'm Drew. Were held at him by Hakoa. Had a decent game. Oh, well, I don't know how good it was in the eye, but in terms of two teams, they're doing quite well. My um, my one each. The Mount Drew one went up and then. Big chicken fillet scored. And then he <laughs> I did big fillet. Um, and the Lions beat ST Raiders three one. Ahmed scored. Um, Isaac scored twice for Ryden, where they beat Dully 3 0. 2 0, sorry. And then Bonnerig lost again. <laughs> yes, he did. That's who we play this weekend, so Bonnerig. I, I can't, like, the bottom of that league in MPL 2 is not looking ideal for Dunbar and the Pain. Um, but above them, it's very congested, isn't it? Above them is, but you're looking at the Dunbar and the Pain, they have to win a fair amount on the trot. Because I don't feel like, like Bonnerig are what? They're 11th. They're nine points ahead of. And we're above Bonnie again. You're on 17 and I can't Anyway, cool. Uh, looking at. MP3. Prospect beat Sydney Uni 3 1. Um, 1 0 down until the last 15 minutes, scored three goals. Um, Bankstown United beat Granville Rage 4 1. Scored two goals in the first six minutes of the game, man. Okay. Kills you. Um, shock of the round, Fraser Park beat Central Coast United 4 0. On the wonderful surface. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Coast Flames beat Camden 2 0. Um, Huskville lost the first loss in five games. Mounties beat them 3 1. Um, and. What have I written? Yeah. How have you done it, mate? Every I, week, man. Every week or something. Who was it? Wait a minute. Who are you missing? Are you missing one game? Well, Paramount Hawks was postponed. I need to that's a gut as well, man, because there's a big circle in that. Apparently, I'm at Hotspur again. <laughs> Who beat Sydney Uni 3 now? I was reading it this morning, man. Sydney Uni? I thought Sydney Uni played Prospect. Prospect in 3 1. Well, I've done something wrong oh, anyway, man. I'm not sure what that is, because 
the kind of thing, there's no results, I know many dribble, dribble's a minefield. It is, and I've heavy done uh, that. We don't have to play a parts pitch, <laughs> but, so we played Fraser, uh, Bill Chow at Fraser Park last night in the Shura Cup, and the game got abandoned after 70-something minutes because of the pitch got flooded. But is it not synthetic? <laughs> that pitch is a, a disgrace. <laughs> Honestly, it's a disgrace. But how that pitch, like, you can complain about Australian football you want. That is, to have to play football on that is a shambles. See, it's yeah. not, there's no drainage. It's got a, several different there's 19 different shades, 50 shades of green on the pitch. It is an absolute disgrace, and you've got God knows facilities around about the place. You've got three five side pitches, you've got a glorified sex dungeon, looks like a bungee jumping thing, I don't know what that is, in the middle of the grass. You've got a Muay Thai gym, you've got a community hall, you've got changing rooms, you've got a gym. But the pitch, the only thing that matters is the pitch, and it's an absolute Jackie Brambles. Do you know what's funny, right? So because I think that I was, I was saying that when we played Dunbar, I was trying to see how bad the pitch was, right? But I don't think it's possible to understand how bad the pitch I don't is. Think it's bad, bad until you see the rain on it, like. But mate, even without the rain. No, nah, it's bad in terms of playing on it. Yeah, but you can still play football. Aye. It rained. Obviously, it was raining last night, and it was. It got bad. It was a probably twenty minute spell where it was passing down. But how quickly the rain falls on the pitch? Because as I said to you, there's a point where. We broke, to, it was one minute at the time we broke, and it was like 4v2. Um, Jake Jediak tried to slide the ball through for a one on one, and he was going through one on one, obviously, and he tried to play the pass, and the ball just stopped completely in a puddle. And every single person ran past it. Same happened to the Dilly players, they'd run with the ball, try and get us in transition, and the ball just stopped dead, and everyone ran past it. And then the referee goes to stop it at, I don't know, 65 minutes, I think we just scored, and they had a conversation, like, oh, we'll stop it. The general consensus between both teams, I think, I was like, do you know what, we came this far, let's just play the game, we'll get through it. And then we played for another 10, 15 minutes, and then they've called it. Yeah. The referee was actually very good. I, I don't know the guy's name, I think he does a, -League, a lot of A-League games. Right. He, was, he was good, to be fair, he managed the game pretty well. But I didn't think that was a great decision. I think it may have been from a, from a safety standpoint made the decision, but I thought he could have done it the first time around, because there was no way the rain was going to... Even if the rain stopped, the pitch was never going to rain. Because when we arrived, it had been raining like at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But it hadn't rained for like eight hours and it was still all around the side of the pitch. Oh, and wow. There was still water in it. <clears throat> I can't believe that. Honestly, I think that's so, so poor. If it was a grass pitch, fair enough. I understand 100%. It's, money has been spent on a synthetic pitch, but the very few you get in Sydney. <clears throat> so what happens now? Well, I don't, I don't know, mate. I, I'd imagine either A, B, pre play from the minute it stopped, which I hope's not the case. Or replay altogether. I don't know how So you would go back to whatever venue and play from one each for the last ten minutes? Uh, I, I think it was maybe thirteen minutes plus stoppage time left in the clock. Would you then have to play the exact same players that were on the pitch? I think I think so. I don't know. I've never been in that situation, but I think you've been in that situation before, you not? Similar. Do you not have like a missed that was a and you had to go two two or something like that? Mm -hmm. Aye. So we played Mount Druitt, popping down a park and um, we got a penalty, we were losing two 0 Got a penalty, missed the pen, no, scored the pen, but our players had ran into the box too early. Right, okay. So instead of retaking the pen, the referee gave a free kick yep. to Mount Druitt. Right, okay. Right, so. Oh, was it so much chaos? Did you say, like, fuck it, replay it? No, so basically the game continued, right, from that. So they, they got a free kick, and um, I, was, I was assistant coach at the time. And I've tried to explain to the linesman that they'd made a mistake. Like, it wasn't an error of judgment. It was literally a mistake. Uh, you have got the rules wrong. But obviously, they didn't want to speak to anyone. So from there, we got two players sent off. And we lost the game 4-0. So we can go to Football New South Wales and say, this is what happened. Obviously, they've looked into it. So they says, we're going to go back to Mount Druitt, play the last 25 minutes. The game's going to restart at 2 0 from the penalty spot. But the people that get sent off were suspended. I heard that's fairly been sent off, I mean. But they get if you're going to go back in time and say that the second half of the game Oh hold on, so when that penalty get given well, it's eleven v eleven. So the pen the red card wasn't given for the penalty offence? No no no. So it was after the penalty offence? Right, so, oh, so the boys get sent off because obviously I think there was a bit of head loss in terms of 
the referees had pretty much oh, ruined the game. For, like, was it violent conduct or something? Nah, it was, well, I think one was a bad tackle and one was for the sent after a second that yellow. Was after the that was after the, the decision was made to give them a free oh, kick. I don't know, mate. Rules in football now are just bonkers. So for me, at, at that point, I was a bit like, well, if you're going to go back and say that the game from the 65th minute on doesn't count, how can you uphold the two red cards that were given in this period of the game? Yeah, well, I mean, luckily, their game's 11 to 11. Nah. So, I'm assuming, same players, if you've made a sub, they have to, they have to start from that point. I'd assume so. <laughs> Imagine, that's so funny, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I, I'm sure, maybe it's somebody that comes already. I'm sure ah, for me, you just need to play the whole thing again, man. I, I, I think I would prefer that. I mean, I don't know if players would prefer but I just feel like if you're going to go to a, a venue, get pre-match, do the warm-up, warm up, prepare properly, just play the game. It was a draw anyway. Uh, it becomes, it, and it becomes such a different game. Like, at that point last night, players are tired, you've brought subs on that are maybe uh, hoping to impact the game. Well, you're going to use the pitch for, if you book a pitch, you're going to use it for that two or three other time slot. Anyway. Otherwise, like I said, you play, say it doesn't go to extra time, and someone scores in the first... 10 minutes. Then you just sit in and it's finished, aye. I go him. Oh. I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. But, um, intro, Fraser Clark, sort your pitch out, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> what we take? They have played for the B League. I know. With that. Like, honestly, what has happened? Ah, it's, a, no, it's, a, it's a shambles. But, like, if they were in the B League, I'm assuming they would have to try and wrap that thing up and go again. Aye, unless they tried to use another venue for a period of time. I mean, but I mean, that was that not quite frustrating if you're involved in Fraser Park when we had this money we built because it's a sun bit of land. Oh, it's amazing, mate. Huge bit of land. Like, the, the potential there is incredible, even in terms of the stand, right? They've put, they've got the, the they found. <laughs> Concrete. Mate, they've got a found, the foundation for a really, really good setup. Like, even the, the build of the stand's fine, but do something like they literally just have big concrete steps. Mm. Ah, it's bad. That's bad, and then it's the away changing room's really nice, but... Ah, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. I don't know why you they don't let you... I, I don't understand why they don't let you just use... Surely there's two changing well, rooms in there. I don't, I, ours was different last night because we had... So obviously Dully got the away changing room of the, the actual bit, and I think the home changing room, I'm going to assume, was like the youth teams and stuff like that, because they were training before the game started. Right. Unless, right, so I've only played there against Dunbar. Mm -hmm. Unless the home dressing room is like a home dressing room and it's got like, don't know, personalised things where players oh, potentially be, leave their things. Be, yeah. That would make sense. I might as well spend your money on making the changing rooms good. I mean, there's no point in making the pitch to look good. Why the changing rooms? <laughs> it's bizarre, man. Who knows, I don't know. I'd be guessing because I, I didn't even get, that, get to go into that. I went in to look at the gym, that was about it. Aye, but fair. I didn't actually see, but the pitch is a shambles. That's the gist of that conversation. Um, so, uh, top goal scorers, what's the top goal scorers mate? I took them off this week, I'm going to do it every second week. <laughs> Why? It's decided. That's <laughs> <laughs> really consistency. Well, because, so, do you know, Euro never scored, um, oh, wait, Nathaniel Blair never scored. Jack Bryan scored, he was coming out of... But he still wasn't ahead of Euro, so there was no change there. There was no change in MPL2. Like, oh, the tight. only difference was Mitch Cross had scored and um, Inner West Hawks had a bye week. So he went joint. With the, the the Japanese striker at in our West Hawks. I can't remember. Hiramo. Tanayuki Hiramo. There you go. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Name, yeah. um, but I so they've both got 15 in beauty, that's the only change. So it's still top goal scorers? Euro. But is he top? Mm -hmm. I've as in like of all divisions? No, no, no. In beauty. Like 13, I think he's got. If only we had the list in front of us. Nah, he's got 13, right? He's got 13. Yeah. Um, Andre Martins has got 11 in MPL 2 and Mitch Cross and Tiramo have got 15 in MPL 3. So Mitch Cross is joint top. Joint top. Mm -hmm. Fair play. Okay, well, I'm interested in those my top goal scorer. That's all about, like, as a defender, man, like, what do you, what do you check? Clean sheet, because clean sheets, I think, is more of a goalkeeper thing. Oh, defenders love it, don't worry, that's probably ah, yeah. a very big statement, but I mean, strikers is goals, goals, goals. Midfielders can go, how many assists? Aye. And some goals. Defenders, is it clean sheets for really? Tackles. <laughs> but Headers, one. What, what is, like, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not a defender, but clean sheets are one you can really look at. But it's not the same, I think keepers... No, nah, it's not the same. Sheets. I think, but I, I don't like, I don't even think keepers are that buzzing about clean sheets. You're personally saying, maybe you're that wee party, because you, you kept the clean sheets to give them up. Never kept two clean sheets <laughs> in a row. <laughs> um, 
it's more like obviously goalkeepers want to perform well, right? But the reality is that your team need to win the game. I think it's, it's a different. But it's not say you're winning, say you're winning five 0 and you just concede the ninetieth minute. Is that not annoying? Of course, you, you don't want to concede goals. I'm not saying that as if like you you, you don't want to keep clean sheets. Obviously, the objective is not to concede right, any so goals. Team win three 0 you're not like yeah, it's clean sheet. Nah, not really. So how come just throw it out there when Sydney FC are playing your buzz with Jackie's clean sheet? Because we win games by one goal nil. No, now he's still be happy with clean sheet, but would you not be jealous? I'd be happy with her as an individual. Why? But that's a coaching perspective of a goalkeeper as opposed to a yeah. goalkeeper's perspective. A goalkeeper just wants to win. Well, this is me speaking as me as a goalkeeper. Nah, I'm not, I'm as not I said, no, no, yes, clean sheet. Aye, point. but I said, like, I, I'd rather if I had a choice between keeping a clean sheet and drawing that on each, or ah. conceding four and we well, winning five four. Of course, I think. Five four. Question: I just say a striker. You can you can win you can score three goals and lose four three or you can score. Another. Some strikers would say they'd rather score three ah, goals. Yeah, they're literally called bell ends. <laughs> I've heard you say that a few times. Ah, they'd rather score three. <laughs> but there's um, I do understand from a good standpoint strikers win the goals. I heard that. I listened to um, what's it called the rest of football mm-hmm. and I think I'm sure I had that debate sometimes like want the goals 100. percent You could easily privately be like, do you want this? I scored. Because you're still kicking your talent. I just don't think. I think everyone wants to win. Unless I agree. Very, very, very selfish. Aye, no, I understand. And also, personal circumstance. Say your team's been you're on the back of your losing streak. And you just want to win at that point. Or, but then if you're a striker and you've not scored in four games and maybe you lose 2 1, you get one goal, you're hanged. Probably monkey off the back. I mean, privately, you're going, yes. Yeah. It's got my goal. I don't know the worst game, not really. I, I think that, I think that every, every goalkeeper and defender wants to keep clean sheets. No, but like, I just like, stats, but like stats and buzzing. Like, now in America, how buzzing they were over stats. Because like, yeah. we had that good midfielder, oh, Davey, and he would dominate games sometimes, but he didn't get a lot of assists, didn't get a lot of goals, so you wouldn't really like, get Aye, mentioned. 100%. But it was unbelievable because he would pass to the guy who would give the assist. Aye. And, and then he'd break just, up the play and then he'd die. I know what you mean. Brilliant player, so then, as a defender, what I mean is like, we can look at the strikers and NPM like, oh, he must be decent. Like Mitch Cross, never had him until this year, oh, he must be decent. Mm-hmm. Him, oh, he must be decent. This Japanese lad must be decent. But we don't actually know. There's a lot of players going under the radar. Definitely. Who's the best goalkeeper in NPL? One. I don't know, mate. Genuinely, I, I don't know. I've not seen, like, I only watch highlights of MPL one game. Chad Sammy Shonga. Nah. Do you know? One game. Do you know? <laughs> do you know um, last year the boy at Hills is a good goalkeeper. Yes, Ryan Wood. Yeah, he's a good goalkeeper. I think he was wonderful last year. MPL. Wonderful. wonderful. He was really, really good, man. Uh, I think he did play well against us actually. Ah, he, he's a good. I think analysts mentioned him as well. He's a good keeper. Um, he was the best goalkeeper in MPL two last year, definitely. What's his name? Ryan Wood. Ryan Wood. Um, but actually, I don't. I don't watch enough, like full games of MPL one to to say that this person. But you look at like last week, the boy Noah James was brilliant. Mm-hmm. So he's the the boy at Marconi's had good games. They give see you see goalkeepers make big saves, but you don't watch them for ninety minutes to be like he's actually a really good keeper. Uh, what are you judging a keeper on? Like, is a keeper, goalkeeper's mental man? <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely, I don't know why you'd be a goalkeeper, but if if. Here's a question, that's not a question, but it's a general statement. How many times do you watch professional games or MPL games? Or just conversations people talk about a keeper and you hear them analyse a oh, keeper's got to do better there. People talk absolute nonsense, mate. Like, like how many people genuinely do you think about even TV pundits who are like the experts, so called experts? How many times do they actually have a goalkeeping guy on? Schmeichel comes up, Schmeichel's on CBS. Did you see there was one that was when uh, it got a bit of notice. It was Peter Check was talking about um, I can't remember the game it was, but it was on TV and he was analysing a, a goalkeeping action. And it was like people will look at it and be like, "Oh, the keeper's done well or not done well." Just as simple as. And Peter Check breaks it down. And he's like, "Well, if you stop it here, this defender's doing this job and that covers this part of the goal. So instead of the goalkeeper stepping here, maybe he should drop here because the, the likelihood is the ball's going to go to this side." So he was actually saying that. He was looking at the actual individual actions and moments of the goalkeeper's movements and being like, this would have produced a different outcome. Which, as you say, you don't get, you just get 
That was shite. Keeper should have done better. Keeper shouldn't lose a goal at his near post. Why not? Do you know what I mean? Like there's like there's no substance behind what uh, it's just things that have I been. I think a lot of coaches would run like I don't I don't know the answer. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I actually tell this is maybe quite bad, but sometimes I tell the keepers to I you know. just take it by a pinch of salt because often, especially when coaches are emotional, I don't feel that in youth football and MPL level that the coaches are very good always have been on top of their emotions. Mm -hmm. So they just let things out and they'll see the goalkeeper do something and be like, why have you done that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, there could have been 10 things that led to the goalkeeper being in the position they were in. And he's gone there because he's trying to do something and they've not seen it and the ball's went somewhere else. And it's like, it's your fault. But there's no, they couldn't, they couldn't tell the goalkeeper why it was their fault. Do you know what I mean? I feel if you're going to give someone criticism for something, you have to be able to say, maybe you could have done this differently. Uh, I think a lot of the problem with Fraser is just, and I, I say it as well, it's like, it's got to do better there. Aye, but how? And I'm like, I, I don't know, but stop <laughs> that being in that net, mate. You <laughs> 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 nearly went in and you should have stopped it. It's hard, it's hard. For, for young goalkeepers, it's particularly tough. Like, it's because you do get a lot of shite information. And also, I probably, the worst bit of information is someone telling them, go and be a goalkeeper, mate. <laughs> Because that is the worst position you can be. <laughs> nah, I love it, man. I love it. But I only love it because I was a wee fatty when I was young, man. That's why I get put in the goal, because I couldn't run. <laughs> Genuinely, I went to my first training session. I was knackered after five minutes. It goes, you go in the goal. That was you. That was me. Stuck. Couldn't run back out. And you stuck ever since? That's been me. I always think I was five. Mad. Well, speaking of your football, we're going to have a wee bit in your football. This yeah. episode will make it a little bit shorter because you're probably... No, we're talking a lot of push. So, I, new football is a good topic. So, Chaz and I have actually got quite a lot of experience in new football. I think it was just 2004 in Scotland. Uh, in new football, we the technical side of the game and then sort of transitioned into the physical side. But we've both worked, well, Chaz came through the professional system in Scotland, playing some uh, a professional first team game uh, in goals, obviously. And then we've done some coaching in Australia. We've both worked for clubs at youth football, we've worked for academies. Involved in all sorts of stuff uh, at all levels, I think, in youth. I mean, events, academies, clubs, Everything. tours, everything you can think of. We've been involved in some ways, in the good, the bad, and the very, 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 very ugly. Uh, big topic of discussion that I know, actually noticed in a lot of companies and a lot of private messages of people speaking, bring someone on to talk about youth football, like in terms of, I don't know if they mean FFA or Football News of Wales to discuss. Suppose the financial side of things, or how it works, or the yeah. best way to structure it. Again, some might just be parents, some might be coaches, but a huge topic, well outside, like the, oh, finance, yeah. the, the financing of things, well outside the sort of realm of knowledge anyway. 100%. But one thing is clear, it's not done all that well. Not just about this is not tied in Australia, because I, I was in the USA for five years, a lot of issues there. Yeah. In the UK for a long time, obviously, a lot of issues there. But I think, like, now we're in Australia, we'll talk as an Australian podcast, the MPL, I think a big conversation usually surrounds the fees that are paid. Yeah. Are the fees, I mean, maybe you don't answer, but are the fees consistent with every club? No. No? No. So every club, so if I've got a child and he's 12, and so have you, what is it dictated by, just whatever they fancy? <sighs> Aye. <laughs> That's simple. Aye, like, so... How much are we talking about, like... Uh, between two and three grand? Is that roughly the number? I reckon between two and a half and three and a half. Right, okay. But I think that, like, you look at some clubs that will have their own facility, might not have to charge for yeah. field hire over the course of the season. Do they? What do you mean? Possibly, yeah. You don't have to, but... Actually, I, don't, I don't really think there's a, a breakdown as such, but I think if people were to be asked, that's something that would come into the, the conversation in terms of what so they pay for. As a quote, I remember... And it was like, do coaches or players or co coaches for teams and parents for the players, do they want what's best for the kids or do they just want their kids to be the best? Want their kids to be the best? Aye. 100%. And I know sometimes, sometimes the line's a little bit blurry there in terms of what is best for the kids in that situation. Every single situation needs quite It's a different, yeah, it's hard. I think that obviously for us having this conversation, it's very, 
It's just opinions. It's what we think. Like it's ah, not. Like, we don't. Well, say, Educated opinions. I'd say it's a not. Bit, like, a, a good, I'd say a good. I'd say a good. I would say a good seven years. Yeah, like I would be deep into your football. Hundred uh, percent. From all like spending what, thirteen hours a day involved in all sorts of avenues of it. So like, yeah. from a, and then obviously 10, 15 years before that, coaching it and you coming through in it. So I think it does come from at least a period, a uh, place of some sort of. Experience. Ah, hundred percent, and it's but not from a parent, parental standpoint. So, yeah. from a parent standpoint, can't comment there because I don't have a kid in the NPL system. So they will have a different viewpoint. Yeah. And like you said, every single club will deal with it differently. Charles differently. They'll have reasons behind that, their own context. But there is a common common denominator between every single person's opinion that it's compared. Usually, it's compared to NRL or AFL or say rugby. Yeah. AFL. They, I don't think they pay anyone near as much as that. No. I don't know the exact fees, but the no general either. consensus seems to be that they don't pay much and football became very much an elite. An uh, elite sport yeah. of for your football. For, but I don't know why though. Like, why is that hard? I don't know. I, I think that, like, I, I, in general conversation, if you look at the NRL, I think the NRL is very much what football is in the UK. Like, it's the poor man sport, so to speak. In the UK, people play rugby that have got money in private schools. They'll get in at tennis because they've got money. Like, but everyone can play football. If you are half decent and a club pick you up, you don't pay any money. If you go and play local, you, you pay, pay that £10, pounds, £5. Five pounds. Five that's what I mean. So it's like, it's affordable. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's not. Like, that's the reality of it. Maybe association level it is. What, what did the association pay? Like, do you think? Maybe five, 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 six hundred bucks. Ah, okay. Um, what do they get for that? So for six hundred bucks, I'm oh. setting up for. Paddington pole benders tomorrow. Paddington pole benders. But decent size. Uh, and they, <laughs> what, seven up, just say seven up box. I get my kit. Yeah. Two training nights. Yeah. A game. That'd be better. No, and then was that pay, pays for the referees. Ah, the, the, all the, the, the things that come with it, whatever yeah, they need to pay for. Voluntary. Them. So yeah. then that's obviously where fees go. Coaches yeah. and MPL aren't voluntary. I don't know, the venue is higher, I don't know, again, there's so many clubs with different But then the, you find that the association clubs get different fees for everything as well. Oh, they, yeah. So if you are part of, let's say, Glebe Gorillas, you'll get a heifering part potentially for $180 an hour or something. Versus what, the public looking at? 360 370 oh, OK. So you get a bit of a discount. Aye, right? so you get the half price pitch higher, but that's obviously for the the best in terms of a synthetic. If you're getting a grass pitch, it might cost you fifty dollars an hour. So the fees become a lot less, which it will be for youth football. Though the majority will play on and then grass PL, pitches. I'm paying three and a half grand, say, or just say three grand, maybe Easy. some more, maybe some less. Let's just say three grand. I'm getting still one kit. I get two kits. You don't only really get a kit. I suppose you're getting your, your, your training, kit. Your training, training kit, gear, and training yeah. gear. Don't know how much you get at that, but. Probably enough. Aye, you should get say two sets, two. Aye, probably enough to get you through the year. And then a train track. nights stay twice a night or three times a day sat train? Depends. A sat train. Both of um, them both included. Two or three. Two or three a night? A week, sorry? Probably say three to be honest. I reckon it's three. Aye. For the youth, yeah. Probably some of the I guess for train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, for the? I think so, that's sap. What is spread train? I think we have train three. Three, three. I think it's three, three for youth. Uh, and then you've got on top of that. Coaches fees, referees fees, registration fees. This is when it would actually be good to somebody go, right, this is, this is where the money actually went to. 100%. Now, I'm not suggesting that clubs shouldn't make some there's, sort of there's, money. There's, obviously, there's, there's fees to pay to football in New South Wales as well. So, the registration sort of fees? Aye, like the, I'm sure there's, there must be some hidden costs. Like, there's no way that they... I'm saying, there's gonna be a, there must be a breakdown of, like, again, and what else in the world do you buy something, right? You don't actually know what's involved in that cost. Like if I went into a shop and say I want to buy this, I'd say, oh, it's five grand, right? Okay, what am I getting for five grand? I'd say this because it costs this much. This is the value of this. This is the value of this, and it breaks down, yeah. and that's how much you pay. Is there a document? They like, if I signed a kid up for, and I'm paying three grand a year, right? What did I get for my three and a half grand? And of course, you can write it off. And go two cents, right? Blah 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 blah. But okay, what's the value? How does that get up to three grand? Where did that come from? And why is his, why is Johnny down the road paying? The, why is this 2-5 and he's getting the same deal? And the coaches, that I mean, the qualifications are pretty much the same across. Yeah. Do you have a, a, 
like, well, what will I be licensed to see a diploma, what they're called? You can do this. So, and we all know the, the level of coaching can very much vary on these courses. Yeah. So if you've got that diploma, you can be coaching paddling pole benders, pole benders, um, coaching whoever, could you stand lifters, and they're down like completely different experiences, mm -hmm. or the same experience, should I say, but completely different fees. Like, sure, there's, there's, a, there's an answer. I know we don't know that. Uh, well, there must be. I add, like, there must be. Uh, there must be. There must be. I, I don't know what else to say, but there must be. Right, so then that brings you up to the conversation of parents, in my opinion, or kids, in my opinion, feel like they're not enough. Yeah. Because they, they go off and do all this other stuff and credit to them because they want to be better, or they feel like they need to, or whatever it might be. But for the fees that are paid in your football, like, I think it'd be good to try and find a solution to where you could fill the gaps for what's that simple shit. I'm not expecting things cost a fortune. Yeah, and but I, I think there's 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 so many problems it would be difficult to figure out where to start. I know, but is that all? But people get paid. So there's people getting paid probably a, a decent salary each year, and this is their exact job. You're talking about your football, like the most popular sport in Australia. Mm -hmm, by far. Can't just go, ah, it sounds too hard. I don't know where to start, man. Well, just keep going with your day. Well, for me, it's, it's, it's hard. No, of course. It's a, general, it's a general topic of conversation because it's something people, like me, get a few, I've, I think at least 10 messages on Instagram in the last two months of people asking the questions about youth football. Like, that's not talking about pathways, opportunities, the ins and outs of the club. There's, there's so many directions and conversations, and everyone will have different opinions on it. But if we just look at, M let's just look at NPL. Yeah. Because that's for 13s. 13s. 13s to 18s, because yep. 18s is still youth. Ignore the whole club championship, keeping the goals up. There's a million conversations can go off in tangents said as well. I'm just talking about, if you're a parent right now, and you've got a child who wants to go and play a sport, maybe they're going to AFL, maybe they're going to NRL, but you want to go and play football, and they want to play football as well, and go, three and a half grand, three grand. Like any financial decision, you're going to go, right, like, let's weigh up the pros and cons here. I want to be part of a team. I get sat in NRL, get sat in the NFL. I want to be athletic, get sat in NRL, get sat in the NFL. Like, you go through all the things. Yep. Pays 500 bucks here. I'm talking, I'm going to assume the family do have financial restrictions. They're not going to go, that's three and a half grand. Yeah, most people will, yeah, um, 100%. So, okay, we'll pay three and a half grand. And when you get to that club, the expectations are high. They want to do well, the coach will have high standards, blah, blah, blah. Right, well, what does it take to be an athlete? Right, well, firstly, you need to attend training. Right, okay, cool. You need to be on time. Yeah, cool. He's all within my control, right? You need to look after what you're eating. Okay, well, healthy food can be expensive, but okay, we'll, we'll get that with us, you're eating. Oh, that's not to us. You need to go and get a dietitian. All right, okay, sound. Uh, well, you need to make sure you do an extra weight here. What do I do? Well, that's not to us. You've got to go and get a coach or get, a, get an SSC coach or get a thing like, right, okay, how much does that cost? Well, that'll cost this and that'll cost that. That's no three and a half grand. Oh, you're injured? We, don't, we have a physio here once every two weeks or once a week or just on game day. Yeah. How much is the physio appointment? Uh, go to this guy who recommends us an up X amount. Well, is there something I can do to prevent this injury happening? It's not a problem going higher, I mean. Right. Like, that's nothing on the, co on the coaches involved. That's just, that's just the way it is, eh? Their job is to coach the teams in front of them, but there's, that's not what's made up of being a football player. And I, I believe there's something far simpler that can be done once I have the exact answer. What I'm saying is, I feel like enough people, people who are paid to do so in the right positions, sat down and go, right, what more can we offer which is more cost effective? There's no way to solve any problems. Money takes money to solve a lot of problems sometimes. But I think kids could be given better guidance on what to do from a technical standpoint, a tactical standpoint, a physical standpoint. Because they're at school, right? I don't, to <laughs> the ports I hear, PDHP is not covering a ton of stuff regarding it. Yeah. Some people are at sports schools. So if you're going to a sports school, <laughs> you're playing for an NPL team, you're doing PDHPE, yeah. you would like to think you don't also need to go and hire more people to fill gaps in. Do you know what I thought you were going to go then the, when you were talking about those three things there? Talking about how much they're training. Oh, that's again. <laughs> another topic. That's why I first started laughing. Another topic. Again, I'm I know. Talking, no, you should be like. You should, there's a certain point where you need to be training more, you need to be getting better and all the rest of it. But the fact that no one manages it, the conversations yeah, don't happen. No conversations at all. If I'm at sports school and I have to go and play with an NPL side that night, 
and there's no communication between them. I would say at the very least, like, public schools or private schools, maybe not because it's a, a little bit different. I feel like the sports schools should have a connection to the sports teams, some sort of point of contact. When you join, when you register the school, what team do you play for? What's your coach's name? Here's an email I'll punt out. This is what we've done today, by the way, FYI, in case you want to be manager. But, but I think that the problem there for me is that each party or each whatever, they think that theirs is more important, right? Ah, so then it's like, so they're going to, as you say, he says, okay, so we've done this today, but I was going to do that tonight. No, no. So I'm not going to not do it because they did it first. No, no. And no. then it becomes... So again, <clears throat> question back, did he want to special the kids? No, of course not. I, I, honestly, I think that, that, that for me, it's difficult, right, because clubs... Clubs need to get players in in order to field teams. Yeah, obviously. So, and that's where, get, that's where they'll actually be on the, the pathway, hypothetically. But the issue there becomes the clubs that are playing MPL1 and MPL2 naturally get better players than that are playing MPL3 and part of football, right? Clubs don't want to get relegated from MPL1 and MPL2. Because what? They don't want to get relegated from a league to the league below, yeah. right? Because obviously that affects who they're going to get in and if, essentially affects the money that they can potentially charge for an MPL1 and MPL2 club. So then it becomes, within that club, their priority is not the kids getting better, it's that the club stay in the league or do well in that league because then that's going to mean that they get the next batch of the under-13s that mm -hmm. the best players want to go to that club. So yeah, yeah, I think... No, you, so the club to get better, but is it not... So the club wants to get better? But the, the club wants to get better, but I feel, again, this is just my opinion, that they get better by, not by neglecting, but I don't think that they get, make the kids they necessarily focus on the kids getting better as individuals. If you get what I mean. I feel yeah. that, I feel that the, the biggest thing for them is that they win a game. So if they're trying to do something in training but they're losing a game to now, I, I think that they'll go away from whatever it was they were trying to work on. And maybe, look, I'm not saying that players need to rotate every week, or, but I think that kids need to be put in different environments in order to learn. But they'll put this guy that is six foot five at under thirteens will become a striker because he's quick and they'll kick the ball over the top and they'll go and win the game. So they're very quick to come away from what they are essentially trying to do in order to make sure that results come. Uh, and the pressure comes from and I think from the coaches and that standpoint would be like if if you're a coach or not thirteens, fourteens, fifteens, not everyone can see the improvement that you can see. You can be like, Well, I know we've lost the last six games, but we Johnny can it couldn't pass with his left foot. Last week now he's taking the ball one first time, driving on a half turn, doing this. They're never doing like different rotations. And the boys are learning to move here, and when they pass the ball, this going there, and he's uh, coming out there, and they're understanding things better. But as you say, it's not the coach's fault because if they lose five games, <laughs> you get somebody come by the way. You know the results need to change. But imagine you, you go and coach under 15, you enjoy your football, and then you get sacked because you're not winning. I know. But it's, then, it's, it's hard one because one is also... Of course, one is a like, problem, 100%, man. 100%. Most people who I meet are footballers. They're competitive. 100%. Nature, that's right involved in it. So it's like, you can't take that, you can't, you can't give the whole, well done, guys, stop participating there. Oh, but I'm not, I'm not suggesting you say well done for participating. You tell them if things aren't good enough, like very, very... Yeah, no, no, yeah. But it's one of them that, I, I do think that there's, especially when you look at 13s, 14s, 15s, maybe 16s, 18s, it's more focused that other way. But 13s, 14s in particular, I think it needs to be about the kids getting better. Well, as the, the argument would be, I suppose, and I would argue as well, is if you keep doing the right things, the results will take care of themselves. 100%. If you're playing well enough, but it can be very difficult in that 13 to 15 you know, because of the growth spots, especially in the, the, the male, the female one, and maybe I'm a little bit earlier, but the male, like you said, you can have a 15 year old who's 4 foot 7, and you can yep. have a 13 year old who's 6 foot 2, and the Completely different skill levels, but the physicality just completely does it. It can knock the small player's confidence. It can change the dynamic of what they're learning. It's like, do you know what? Just stick them up front. I was actually talking to a person who's on the B diploma with us, and he coaches, I won't mention the club and all the rest of it, but he was saying at the weekend, I was like, how's your team going on? He's like, ah, oh, like, look, very positive in terms of, I was like, we're doing really well, we're improving week by week, we're doing the right stuff. It's like, but anytime we start to think about rhythm, we find some teams just put the strongest, fastest player up centre half and centre forward, put it up, boom. Go. This is very difficult to, to yeah. manage that. Uh, but from a from a an NPL, I'm sure there's probably a, a handful of NPL clubs who are 
doing a lot for our kids, like, or doing as much as within the resources. I can talk from a spirit standpoint, but that's pretty much as, as in depth I can see. Like, as in, I've not been to Appiah's youth training, looking to do a Monday, and a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. Yeah. I've not been to Parramatta's or Hawkesbury's, but I do know a lot of work. There's a lot of work. Oh, of so course. Like, that's, that's the thing. It's not like we're not sitting here, obviously, trying to slaughter people, but it's just more people working together to make things better. Do you know what I mean? I think that's important. I, I, for me, I just feel that people aren't willing to work together. I think that's a huge problem. A, across, not just football, but I across sport. Like, if you're, if you're at a, a private school and I'm the coach of Bankstown United under 15s, or Gary, when you finish your work, like, can you phone the coach of Endeavour and get him to come and see what Jimmy did the day before? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can phone the coach of Endeavour and get him to come and see what Jimmy did the day before? I need to go home, I need to feed the kids. I need to cook, I need to get training, I need to get boys up, I score a 15 plus. It becomes like an extra job and the compensation doesn't match that level. But that's when I think it has to come not on an individual level or that like coach level, I think it has to come from the club's level and then even above that from whether it be FFA, if it's one of the super rules. Whoever, whoever deals with that, I just think there has to be, there's never going to be a perfect package because oh, he needs money, he needs finances. We right. probably should have done it when. When the Matildas did really well in the World Cup and there was some fundamental level, I think the fundamental went to a different sport, a, a large chunk of it. Yeah. I feel like that was a good opportunity to, to pump some money into the football, the grassroots levels, and get some more funding behind things. But I, I just think there's, there's some low hanging fruits. And like, an example that I always look at, for me, obviously, I'm inside the physical side of the game, but like nutrition and movement and all that stuff, people spend a fortune. Do you know, I, sorry, I'm just laughing because I've got a goalkeeper who, as you say, right, thinks he's doing everything right. But the reality is that despite being in the MPL system for however long he's been in, maybe five years now, he wasn't doing, he wasn't putting enough into his body to get to where he wanted to get to physically. Which, as a goalkeeper, hampers you if you're not if you're not the tallest in the world. You need to be strong in terms of coming out to command, etc. Um, but people just don't know. I think that there's a lack of a lack of knowledge from me as well um, about the what you have to do and what you have to be putting in your body to perform at the levels you want to perform at, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I think that, as I said, I don't, I don't know enough about it. I'm lucky that I can phone you and ask you questions. But for kids, kids want to get sized. Maybe not necessarily for football. You see this all the time. People want to look good. Mm -hmm. But especially when you're a young, 17-year-old boy. But you know. I, think, I, I do think that's... I, I mean, I'm not necessarily looking like beach ready, but I think if you're a coach, right, and you've got to get some, some recruitment meetings today with a new player, mm -hmm. and you turn up to him for a coffee or whatever else, and he just sits there and you know... You, don't care who you are, human uh, reaction is you're going to judge them by appearance almost straight away. Yeah. If they turn up looking like an actor, just looking thin on their shirt, looking tall, slim, but whatever else, you're going, all right, okay, it's like a good, a good start. Do you know what I mean? Or if you go in, a wee steak pie with hands walks in, they're like, oh, what is going on here? A wee steak pie with hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's happening here? Like, nah, it's 100%. not exactly great, because I just suggest to you as a coach that like, you might be a good player, but the standards here because if your standards are going to drop away from here, you can't just randomly pick them up. No, no. You may have a great first touch and great finish and great moving, but we need a wee bit more. Obviously, age dependent. If you're 33 and you're, you're a journeyman, you've, done, you've proved it time and time again. Completely different scenario. But I'm talking about more the people try to break through. Oh, yeah, and that. I think the easiest, and I, I say this a lot to you, but one of the easiest things I, will, I think worth exploring is from that side of things, because that's an expense of the health side of things for kids and parents included, is the physical side because physical therapy, strength and conditioning, nutrition, etc. Nutrition and strength and conditioning, I would see, is more prevention of having to go to get these injuries, which may happen anyway because the kids are grown, but it can be expensive and it's, it's sometimes it's value is worth, worth its weight and goal because it can transform their life in many different ways, but I think these kids need more guidance on that situation at club level because I've had players who are 21 20, mm -hmm. come to me, who've been at MK1 their whole life, who literally have no knowledge whatsoever, and they have been through the full system, we'll call it. Yeah. With no knowledge whatsoever, never even did a fitness test. Never, again, let, let's, no one's about it. This is a tiny piece of the puzzle. You yeah. need to be good at football. 
Yeah, 100%. You need to be a football player. That's, I'm not pretending this is a basal piece, but it's so important. I'm just laughing at it because you say, how many times do teams do a fitness test, right? And you do a fitness test at the start of pre season, at the end of pre season. And nothing happens between. And you don't do it in between. No one tells you anything about the results, they just do it. Aye. And, okay. and again, it's, it's, it's a lack of knowledge. Sorry, rant and go. No, no, I, I think it's important because like, when I first finished my degree and done my education and blah, 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 I remember thinking to myself, like, textbook. I don't have to be that textbook, but any coach, any parent knows you walk in it. Football is very really textbook because yeah. you've got different size pitch, different players can't make it, that like different equipment. Like this is oh, this is not a season textbook. You need to know how to manage from a practical standpoint. And then that's one thing I used to. I went from being like this test all this to I'm only assessing what I'm actually going to try and fix. Yeah. Because players and I've been there myself. I'll do these tests. Test like that's the ability. I know you don't like the Euro test. I know you don't want to sit and do a strength test. Yeah. But I'll be able to find the gaps in your performance that will help you stay on the pitch. I will say to players, the only things that matter, the only two things that matter for you, if you want to be a football player, is how many games you play this year and when was the last time you were injured. If that can be, I've not been injured in ages and I've played 30 out of 30 games, well, it's up to you then, mate. You're, ready, you're available, you're ready to play, do your magic on the pitch. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be, like, physicality is important, but the most important thing is availability. That's Aye, the most 100%. thing. So, the, the, obviously the things you assess, you obviously want to try to improve, that's first and foremost. But going back to my point of for youth football, the assessing all that's like small details, on a bigger thing of general education, there's so many kids in sports science and university, but you've got ACU, you've got UNSW, yep. Sydney Uni, you've got all sorts of universities. How many of those students are working with an MPL club? Yep. The conversation will be, ah yeah, but Money is crap, or whatever else it is. Like, me, I literally work for but the, the, 50 bucks a week for. Do, but do these a people. Month for free? See if these people. Do, they, are, they are the students. Surely they have like placement hours yeah, and they've got yeah, these yeah, things yeah. in place that they have to fulfil X amount of hours of practical work yeah. in and order to gain their degree. I know some clubs do this. Yeah. We'll take some students on. I think Spirit do it. I'm assuming you, you do it at the yeah. youth level. Using these people for their intern hours, and I'm not expect uh, they, they should be paid at some some point or paid in something that's a mo- not a monetary value, but it, they would have to pay for it elsewhere. If you get to work with a professional coach or a professional yeah, yeah. SNC or whatever it might be in your internship, you'd have to pay for that elsewhere. So you're getting free education in that realm, and it's practical, and you've got a network there to a ladder into the system. I think that should be leveraged so much more. If you could, 5,000 sports science students, plus the dietitian students, plus you've got physiotherapy students. Aye. Surely you can get a placement. I'm not saying it's going to be brilliant, but something's always better than nothing. Aye. Something's better than nothing, and some things are better than other things. Do you know what annoys me, right? See the fact that we are sitting here. Surely someone has gone down all these avenues. Like, surely there's a, there's a reason as to why this isn't a thing. I think, at the same time, I think... The students who we mention are also a factor. I speak to. I remember when I was, you spoke to that academy and I ran a mentorship. What academy? Uh, no, not that one. Oh. <laughs> uh, when I ran the gym, right. uh, remember I done a mentorship. For yeah. A free, a free mentorship for students, and it was I, I put eight places in it, completely free. And it was two hours once a week, and they did practical. I gave them homework, we tasks to do, practical tasks, assessments, blah blah blah. When. I got four of them opportunities within NPL clubs and only one of them went. Well, they all went, but as soon as they realised the hours, yeah, the, the, com- the, the commitment, the commitment involved, needed, yeah, yeah. tied it off. One stayed, she was a physio, and she helped out for a full year with one of the NPL clubs. The rest of them tied it off. Nah, I don't want to do that. I'm like, mate, you're 18, you've got no experience. That's and that's fine, it's you, absolutely fine, I have no experience. You're, you're learning. This is part, this is the practical part. You've got the theory and you can read as much as you want. Foot, like going to a theory, sit in a room, learning about coaching off Pep Guardiola. It's brilliant, it sounds cool, you can write down the stuff. Right, mate, go and deliver a session with 30 players. What? You've got two balls. Aye. Uh, Good luck. Have a pitch, on you go, mate. Aye. But there's, not, there's nothing in the textbook for that. And I'm like, go and, this is the point, go, you're going to make an arse, that's fine, go and do it. And only one done it, and that's because they, they want to go straight into Sydney FC, they want to go straight into Top, like a top professional, I'm like, mate, there's people I know who are 45 who are like literally 
top level practitioners who don't go into these. Like, no. And same with coaching. There's top coaches who live and breathe coaching who can't get a professional gig. Oh, of course. I mean, so I think it has to work both ways. Like, even after the opportunity is not provided, how hard is it for a university to talk to a local MPL club? We get our students here. If you get teams, oh, we've got thirteen teams. Aye, can we have one? Can you guys, as one of your internships, give the boys a twelve-week home body weight program to do? Aye. Is it going to turn them into Alfonso Davis and Alfonso 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 Davis. Unbelievable like, athletes. No. no, but it's a foundational thing, the habit of, right mate, you've done your homework, you've done your football training, now you've got this 15-minute little routine. Yeah. Remember, you're eating this, you're doing this before the game. Basic foundational habits. So when they hit 16, 17, they're not scrambling, they're like, oh my god, I'm so far behind. Because if you go to the UK, eh, like we don't have the same setup as the UK. Ah, UK got like rules under 13s, man, you're under 13, like, yeah, yeah. different system. But that is a university. Ah, of course like, it is. You're learning they literally, nutrition, they, strength. They train, yeah. go to school. Well, they train, have their breakfast there, go to school, uh, come back to school. So that's what I mean. 16, they Aye. know what's good, what's bad, what should they improve, and that's, again, not the difference maker, because everyone's doing that. Are our, our clubs... No, they're, they're not asking that question, because the answer's no. I was going to say, do you think clubs are doing anything in terms of what kids should be eating? Or like I, 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 well, again, so many clubs, isn't there? And I, I'm including association clubs. Just from, what, just from what you hear, though, like obviously with, with I would say there's attempts. I, don't, I think it can be done more. Yeah, there's, there's more can be done. A hundred percent more can be done because I don't think I think it can be as simple. There's loads of simple ways of doing it. Like, it doesn't have to be you're going to do a, a university degree of nutrition here. Like. People ask me, hey, I have players, grown men, ask me something like not knowing what their hamstring is. <laughs> and you laugh, that happens more often than you think. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't believe and, and like, but some lads don't know how, like, unless you walk them with their hand to warm up, they don't know how to warm themselves up. I'm like, you've been playing football for 30 years. And it's because, again, and you yourself, as a football player, go and stand in that cone, yeah, you go over there, come over here. To, you're used to being directed, so you sort of switch off until it's like, we're playing a game, no restriction, brilliant, let's go for it. And you go and do your thing. So it is very hand held and I think it's it's part of the like orderly system, coaching, do this, do this. And some people just switch off and they some guys, I've actually no I don't even know what I've been doing doing that one up, I've just been just been doing following it. your movement now. Aye. And then so if adults are doing it, and how many adults do you know who are got emotional intelligence, yeah. are years of experience, they still eat shit, don't look after themselves from a health the basic health perspective. I'm not talking about being an athlete here, I'm talking Aye. about just to bed. But do you know what though? I, I, I honestly, right? I don't think that. I think it's just. A, I think it's a lack of knowledge. But like, I don't. I don't even. Th- and this is where like I'm talking about goalkeepers, right? They just don't know. People. People sometimes I think think they're doing things the right way. Maybe because they don't know much different. Or they see right that they should eat something, eggs and something else for breakfast. So they eat that, right? And then they'll have. Chicken and vegetables for lunch, but maybe they're not having enough calories to f- fuel their body. But they don't know because they are seeing random stuff and doing random stuff that they think in their head, I'm doing the right thing. But because they don't, they don't have any knowledge. No one tells them X, Y, Z. You should be in X amount of calories if you are this weight. So they just. I mean, kids level. I kids level, wouldn't expect kids to track. Like, I know, but they're trying to track. Calories. No, but I'm talking. I'm talking older kids. I'm 60, 16, 17, 18, when yeah. they they are aware of what they're doing. But it's just because they don't know, and that, that is the problem. Obviously, we go back to like how we started talking in terms of our clubs providing. Should that come from then, right? Because I mean, I would. It'd be quite a lot of pressure on a club to say, right, you're going to have a dietitian. What's a dietitian do for a whole year? Very difficult, but. I feel like even if it came from the FFA, well, here is a blueprint. Here's a blueprint Aye. for our future soccerers, like you from under twelves. Foundation again. I'm talking Aye. like, like stupid, basic, stupid knowledge. Like, Aye. First three months, like, for the next thirty days, you will rather have a habit of drinking one litre of water, right? Yeah. Gamify it. Have some points. Do blah blah blah. One two. Can you have three fruit and veg with your meals over the course of it? Like tick it off. Make it a leaderboard. Like. Gamify at home, here's some little game with it, like bullet bingo. And that, I mean, there's a million different things you can do. And then you look back after 12 months, you go, oh, I'm actually drinking two litres of water, I'm five fruit and veg, I'm getting my. I'm, I'm sleeping, I'm, I'm eating, eating right. I'm on my phone before bed, I'm doing my little stretching. Like, again, you're not going to 
you're not going to become a football player because you're doing those things, but every high performer on the pitch, off the pitch, who you go, what do you do? Like, I remember watching Jordan Henderson, and he's just like, mate, the modern professional obviously has a great career, and he's just like, for my game, I uh, make sure I sleep well and eat well. After the game, I make sure I prioritise getting good food, get a good sleep, get the training early, I do a good warm up and train. And then as soon as training's finished, I think, right, how do I prepare myself next for the next thing? Yeah. That's it, there's no, oh, I've got a special plan, mate, can I tell you? Just like the stuff, there's like a quote someone said, it was like, you don't, like, most people don't need to be educated, they need to be reminded. Like, you know, you should go to your bed, there's a, you can look at what you go half time and go, hey, right, bedtime's Chico. <laughs> It's not like you're going, why didn't you go to bed? Like, you know, why you should go to bed? But you go, one minute episode. Aye, you, no, 100%. Just, just check Instagram quickly one more time and then, oh, I can't sleep, man. Uh, 10 o'clock at night, I don't do well in coffee. I'm a quick cappuccino. you know. Aye. I mean, you, that's not education, that's a reminder. Remember, remember why you're doing this, what your goal is. But I think that's, that's a, I think there needs to be a why. I think that that's... But for the, I'm assuming most for, of these players why just but that's, players. No, that's, I agree for the kids. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just understanding it in my head. Understand. Yeah, you're right. There is a bit, I, I think that's, the sleep time is slightly different for me. That, like in terms of people know, regardless of... But see when you're about people, people, I'm, I'm again, let's not go into the nuances of, like, oh, the grams of carb, the pre-match. Ah, of I'm, course. I'm talking about in terms of... General. If I picked up a donut and picked up an apple and says, right, mate, pre-match, what do you fancy? Like, what's better for your body for this match? Every single kid is going to go, donut, no. Every single kid's going to say, I'm going to say donut. Of course, yeah. That's not, you just need to remind them. Aye. Like, right, mate. This is good for you because of this. This is going to happen. Like, of course, there's a parent thing, and I'm sure the parents do an unbelievable job. So, so this is not about parents. This is about what clubs can do, MPL, to keep the reminders there's going to be kids falling through the cracks. There's going to be kids who don't. Oh, like of course, it. aye, hundred percent. This is just about leaving no excuses on the table. If I'm at a, so a lot of players I work with, if I want me a lot older players and they go, oh, I've been playing, mate. I've been playing at Blacktown City for ten years. Oh, mate, your movements in my head, movements poor. Never done strength training in his life. Nutrition's absolutely shambles. You're talking about me. Body, body composition's <laughs> poor. Like, no education on, like, anything. Do we, like, anything. Yeah. You put that right, well, clubs, there's a gap here. Aye, you can't be in the system for 10 years and not pick that shit up along the way. Yeah. That, that to me, is where the gaps... Again, general reminders. <laughs> no, this is not transform. You walk through every single club, like, look, I'm on the MPLT. Walk through South Coast Flames, walk through Camden Tigers, Central Coast. Go and spend a week at the youth. See if there's even... Things on the wall as of like little handouts have been given. Is there any sort of thing that like, you can get apps? There's like a million different ways. Right. I do that. E- an email, a weekly email. Like how hard a text. A right. text. Ah, you're right. There's a million different ways just to go. Remember, guys, this week we're focusing on. There's your habit. Yeah. Here's your body weight program to do at home. It'll take you 15 minutes. Fuck, man. Nah, it's not difficult, man. Right. right. That's on. That's on. That's on. Yeah. Alright, let's move on. Um, but it's true though. It's, it's interesting because I feel there must be a reason as to why why it's not been done. There that's has. Some, that's some of the, That's me running the physical side. But I mean, from the financial side, it would be good to get someone who knows way more about it. Hundred percent. Just to clarify, obviously, if people listen. I know we talk a lot of shit, but this is just an opinion. And I think, I that especially with the with the, the the money that's involved, if it costs. Say, say five thousand dollars, right? And I, I don't think it would cost five thousand dollars for a team to have. Um, I wouldn't say like a weekly fucking meal plan or a weekly something that helps with these things. Surely, if they are charging or if they're receiving, I don't know, say say two grand, twenty, forty grand per team. Surely, a percentage of that could go towards trying to get something along the lines that will help them. Mate, you could honestly whip it up, and it's only been a week doing it, you could whip it up for the whole, the whole MP on the whole set. Nah, that's what I mean. Like a hundred percent. But that's just, that's a, that's one topic of many, many topics in youth football. I think youth football, usually talk about the men's football, uh, but I think the youth football as effectively going to come do you know, do you know it's, it's just a shame, right? Because there are a lot of good players and I don't feel that the that, that ultimate, I think, of what, what we're thinking is that sometimes they're not given enough to potentially 
be the best they could be. Yeah. Be it in, like, as you say, could it, partly the coaching, partly the off-the-field stuff, partly... There's so many different wee bits that they're just not given enough. Well, impacts are life as well, mate. If you get a... Even from the skill side of things, if you're in an environment where you're getting better at football, you're in, it's fun, you're picking up some nice healthy habits along the way, you're getting to bed earlier, you're going to wake up with more energy, you'll go to school with better mental clarity, yep. you'll retain information better from what they've learned either in a skill session, tactical session or school. And around the house, they're not going to be whinging or starting. Aye, 100%. Or they're not going to be like, moody around the room. Obviously, they're, they're teenagers, so they're going to be moody at some point. But yeah, I mean, there's going to be so many more benefits. And this is, is a, imagine, uh, what are you now, 33? 34, aye. 34. Imagine when you're 13, someone says to you, right, mate, you want to start doing these things. Aye. But then you're 21, you'd be like, this is, a, this is like so ingrained in me. Aye, it's just as your I life. As I an adult, 100%. I don't have to, to second guess myself. You might let yourself go here and there, but you're going to know what your default is. Aye. 100%. No, I agree. And that's why I think that, that obviously for us, it's when we grew up, there wasn't as much information and stuff available. That's so, right. That's so no, much I know, 100%. Now, I feel like the same, same things are there. Same for, problems. For us, it was like... Oh, mate. Nothing. Like, can I cope? I remember the big co- uh, sports carnivals. You'd have a couple of can I cope between games. I used to get a, a saucy supper between my, my school training Sausage and my... Chips. Aye. Between my school training and going to this one. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, that's, that was like complete ignorance. Yeah, I know. The internet wasn't really... And I think that's, that, that's why it's like... It's so frustrating because there are, there's so much available and kids can be helped and everything's there for them now, man. There's just so much, it's almost paralysis by analysis. You're just like reading so much and you're like, I don't know what to do. Aye. There's so much stuff, that's confusing, that's hypocritical. Mate, guess what? Right. I get 11 out of 12 last week. Ah, you said that 11 out of 12. Outstanding. Aye, that's the highest, isn't it? That is the highest. Aye, it's still on the top, but are you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's cool. Let's tack on. That was a run and a half. That was. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. I, again, I, I might make it clear again. I don't actually know what other clubs do. Ah, I know. I just, I just want some coach to be like, I, maybe they are a team. No, do you know what? So there's, I feel that there's going to be people that are going to potentially be annoyed at our conversation and our opinions. But it's, oh, it is our that. opinions and it's... It's, it comes from a good place in terms of wanting what's best for kids and try to provide an opportunity for kids to potentially get to where they would like to get to. So I think that's just important to see. Aye, there'll be some, there'll be some coaching like this. Aye, these are idiots. Aye, <laughs> 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 definitely idiots. So ah, um, right, moving on. Manly play Sydney United. This is interesting because mind Adrian said Aye. they've not beaten them. Sydney United, but... And then, but, and then Adrian's also got sent off. Still Sydney United. I mean, I couldn't really well. I want Sydney United and all. I'm trying to send you the other way so I can get points back. Oh, by the way, I just thought. What? There's no guess this week, it's only Shafter score. The, the Cumulot score. What we'll do with the guess is we'll give them the average of all the guests so far. Okay, that's fair. Right. Uh, oh, do you know what we'll do? We'll put them in chat GPT and that'll be our guest this week. No, because we've already got that. That's separate. Just yeah. do it, the average is good. Average, okay. Central Coast Mariners at home to St George Saints. Draw. Oh, you never picked draws. I'm going to St George. Best in Sydney Wonders at home to Olympic. Olympic. Oh, I'm going West in Sydney Wanderers. Blacktown at home to Marconi. Oh, that'll be a good game. Marconi. I'm going Marconi and all. Bulls at home to Mount Druitt. Oh, is that first versus second? First versus second. I've went Bulls. And this third v fourth, Hakoa versus Tigers. Hakoa. I'm going Hakoa and all. Oh, mate. Well, I've got two different from you so far. Three different from you. Timber on the peen, bottom versus second bottom. Aye. Oh, jeez. At Fraser Park, if it rains, it's off. That is an <laughs> advertising for football. <laughs> if it rains, it's off, they'll move it to Nepean, but it's also going to be off. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to go draw. I have no idea that game is tossed to the coin. Um, is Bankstown, Bankstown City? City at home to Spartans? Bankstown City. I'm going to go draw. Hussville at home to Central Coast United. Draw. I'm going Hussville. Parramatta at Bankstown United. 
in Bankstown. Camden at home to Hawkesbury. Hawkesbury or Stammer Hawks? Stammer Hawks, well done. Um, I'm going to go Stammer Hawks. I'm going to, that's actually in our West Hawks. Oh, is that, is that your team, eh? Yeah, it's in your team. And Newcastle Jets at home to Fraser Park. Newcastle Jets. Jets. Done, done, done. Right, well, we'll get next week we've got a guest, thankfully. Right. You'll need to listen to us talk shit again. Right. Um, okay, that's us done, class. Cheers, mum, mum.